We're in Denver. Yeah. And it's hey. about 19 degrees outside. Yeah. Yeah. And that's part of the reason we're here. Guys, this is the Korea family. It's Frankie, Noreen, and their four kids, Alex, Andrew, Adam, and little Destiny. And up until recently, they were a typical American family. Check out this tape we were sent, and you'll see why we're here. Welcome to the Korea family. My name is Noreen. My name is Frank. We just basically want to know if you can give us a chance and let us get back on our feet and give us a life once again. It was about two months ago when, when everything started going downhill for us. My husband lost his job and he got laid off. Before that, I was I had a good paying job. We had a house, me, my wife, my kids, we had everything. So the family had to move from motel to motel. And then when they finally ran out of money completely, they had no choice, but they had to move into an emergency homeless shelter. So the whole family, all six of them, have to squeeze into this really tiny, tiny room in that shelter. But it gets even tougher than that. Now during the day, the shelter actually has to close, which means the family has to walk the streets or ride city buses to stay warm. We have to be out from 7 to 5.30 every day. Sometimes when it's so cold out there, it's like, you know, we don't have no choice but to be out there. I worry mostly about my little sister because she's the littlest one. And my two other brothers, they're, I worry about them, but they're old enough. I still, I still watch over them and everything. You know, they look up to us, so we're supposed to be the ones, you know, to get them through this. My kids got clothes in their back, they got food in their stomach, they're doing good, but to me that's not good enough. So the Koreans are thankful to have a roof over their head, right? But they can't stay there forever. In fact, they can't stay there much longer. Now, they've already been at the shelter for two months and they can only stay for three. So now they have no idea where they're gonna go next. That's where we come in. Hi, ABC. My name is Connie Zimmerman, the founder and the director of Colorado Homeless Families. We take care of homeless families with children, families that have initiative to help themselves. And what these guys do is they get families back on their feet by giving them a place to live for as long as they need it. Then another family moves in, and it's a really amazing program. Right now, she has room for 26 families, but she's filled up, and it's getting colder every day. So if she had more homes, she could help more families. Now, what Colorado Homeless Families does have is an empty lot, and Connie's asked us to help them build a house on it. ABC, please assist us in helping out the Korea family to move into a home here. Please, the guys, the guys. we're good family, please. <laughs> guys, this family needs a home of their own, right? And we're going to help Colorado homeless families give them a perfect place for a brand new start. Can we do it? Absolutely. Let's do it! So this is it. This is actually where they've been staying. But there's a lot of families in there. I don't really want to hurt anyone's feelings. So we're going to do things a little differently. Does anyone have a quarter I can borrow? I got uh. some change. Hey, is this the Jeffco Action Center? Hi there, I'm trying to get in touch with um, Frankie Korea. Okay, here, here he comes. So they should be coming through this door right here. Yeah. They're coming? Surprising the Korea family was a very humbling experience. Imagine what these two have been through as parents. You guys seem a little overwhelmed, you okay? <laughs> no, I'm shaking. <laughs> it's special to our family, thanks a lot. Absolutely. Oh man. <laughs> My legs, they feel like they wanna just drop. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's tough to see what you guys have been going through, but the good news is, is that's all about to change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, you guys are gonna go away for a week. And while you're gone, we're going to try and build you guys a place to live. But we don't have a lot of time, so it actually, if you guys will take me through here, show me where you guys have been living, pack whatever you guys have, and you will not be coming back to this shelter ever. Okay? So once you leave here, you're going with us. <laughs> the whole time they're like, somebody pinched me. I can't believe this has happened. So let's go see where you've been living. Welcome to a, uh, a shelter for the homeless. You know, what do you expect to see? Do you expect to see jacuzzis and, and fireplaces? I mean, it's a clean facility. It's a place where you can go get a shower and a hot meal, but it's not home. This is the kitchen, and what they do here is uh, not, we don't have to make any kind of food. Everything volunteered, everything's already ready. All we have to do is just warm it up. This is our living room right here. Gotcha, so this is uh, yeah. 
We all watch TV in our cabinet right there. So how many people actually share all this space? 20 to 24 people. The room that we actually stay in is the last one. This is our room. Me, me my wife, and uh, my daughter sleep on this side, and Adam sleeps right here on the floor. I can't believe all you guys actually sleep in here. I mean, we're talking about, what, an 8-foot by 10-foot room? It's not like, oh, wow, great, I'm in a shelter. It's, it's a terrible thing to one's heart, to one's soul, to one's mind that, that this is what's happened to you. That's what really, really tears me apart, to see my daughter, you know? Yeah. Seeing her like, sleep like that and my wife not knowing where to go. This guy was going out and trying to work. He was working a temp job. He just couldn't make enough money to make a difference. These guys ended up in a hole they couldn't come out of. These are all people who do not want handouts. They want a hand up. I was really happy for the fact that this shelter existed to help these people out. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Good, how's it going with you? All right, man. Shocker? Shocker is water, though. I'm Paul. Paul, nice, nice to meet you, Paul. Nice to meet you. Going through the Jeffco Action Center and, and talking with people and getting their stories, and they're no different than you are me. Lillian. Lillian, hi, nice to meet you. And I'm Paul. We call these people homeless, and I don't know if that's right. I think they're houseless. I think, uh, Home is where you're standing. What's your name? Mariah. Mariah? I'm Eduardo. That's a Mexican name. It is a Mexican name. I was able to meet uh, a few of the guys that were there, and, and uh, one of them, John. John, great guy. Nice to meet you, John. Thank you. I want to help you guys. You want to help? <laughs> I could always use some help. I could use some help. You want to come out and give me a hand? Oh, yeah. Well, I'd love to have you. What? what are you doing out here in the cold? I like it outside. Yeah. You know, what if a normal person like any one of us goes through a really tough time, they're surprised by something, they lose their job, or a lot of things can happen, and there's nobody around. And there are a lot of people that were in the center like that that were actually just on their own, and it kind of broke my heart. Have you guys been here a long time? I've been here for three weeks. Almost two and a half, almost three weeks. Well, you know how it is, is that just about everybody in America is only two weeks away from uh, the street, so yeah. that's really what it is. Well, I lost my job, got laid off. Where are we working? Uh, for a plumbing company. And I just couldn't find another job and it just snowballed. It really changes your mind on what you think a homeless person is because you don't think you'll ever know anyone like that. You don't put a face with that. You just think it's, it's a sad story that wouldn't happen to anyone you know. And then when you walk into this place and you see a whole family of people just like you and I that were doing fine. Frankie, how did it happen so fast? What happened? I was working for a company making corrugated boxes. And they just had the war happen, and they just happened to lay off 30 people, and I was one of them. I, that job, I loved. I took pride in my work, and my stamp, my seal was on that box, and I lost everything. I didn't even know how to tell my wife. I just sat on my porch, didn't know how to tell her. And my son happened to see me, said, Mom, there's Dad. You know, she, she comes out saying, what are you doing home from work? I just reached over my hand like that and I just gave her the envelope. So we had a little bit of money on us and a, I paid a couple months rent and after that it just went downhill. The money ran out. I didn't have, I mean, it was hard for me to find another job and and they look at me and it's just like, they, the look they gave me is like, Dad, you know, when are you gonna get us out of this? How, what are we gonna do? For one time in my life, I didn't have an answer for him. I just didn't have it. Yeah. I mean, they're supposed to be looking up to me, us parents. But for one, it's like I let them down. I try to stay strong, but it's like sometimes I break and I just want to give up. It's all right, man. It's going to be all right. We're going to make a difference. It tore me up, man. Uh, it tore me up. I don't know. I just. There's no reason for that. I think we should be able to pull together as a culture and a society to eradicate homelessness altogether, and most especially for kids. We're ready. So that's the last time you guys will be signing out. Yeah, this will be our last time right here. I can't believe this is all you guys have. Right. So guys, wave goodbye to the shelter because this is the last time you'll ever have to stay in one again. Wow. Let's go, guys. Go on in, guys.